Okay, welcome back for more. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at Charles's Law or some questions centered around Charles's Law. And what that is, is basically how the temperature affects pressure and how it affects volume. So in part one of this session, we'll look at how temperature affects pressure. And in part two, we'll look at how temperature affects volume. Okay, so get ready. I'll rip up some questions. Okay, so let's get things started with this question right here. A scuba cylinder is filled to 200 bar at an ambient temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. If the cylinder is then used in water that is four degrees Celsius, what would be the approximate pressure? So like we said, this is centered around Charles law. And in this instance, what's happening is as we increase the temperature, the pressure increases with it. As you decrease temperature, you decrease the pressure with it, okay? So it's a nice, simple principle to get your head around. So to work a question like this out, there are two pieces of information that we need to know. The first of those is what is the temperature change, okay? Whether it's a rise or fall, uh, we need to work that out. In this question, we're starting at 27 degrees and then we're using the cylinder in four degrees. So that represents a drop in temperature of 23 degrees overall. So we can just write that down. We have a drop of 23 degrees. Now the next piece of information we need to know is, well, how much pressure do we lose or gain for every degree that we drop or rise? And this is just a number that you have to remember, okay? So for every one degree Celsius, this will represent a 0 0.6 bar change in pressure. So what we do now is just a simple matter of there are 23 degrees that we have lost. So we're going to lose 23 0.6s. So this is just 23 multiplied by 0 0.6. And if you check your calculators, that will give you 13.8 overall, which is bar. So this 23 degree drop in temperature will represent a 13.8 bar drop in pressure. The question tells you that the tank starts with 200 bar. So when that tank is then put in four degree water, what it's eventually going to do is it's going to reduce that pressure by 13.8 bar, which is going to overall mean 186.2. Okay, because we take the 13.8 from the 200, we haven't used that air or that gas it's just what's happened by reducing the temperature and that um, gas pressure is reducing relative to that, okay? So what I'll do for the sake of repetition and practice is I'll just quickly write another question up there as we always do, and then we'll work through the numbers again based on this, okay? So give us a second. Okay, nice and quick. Right, we're gonna take a look at this question now, okay? So very similar question, we've just changed the numbers just for some added practice. If a scuba cylinder is filled to 186 bar at an ambient temperature of 16 degrees Celsius, if the cylinder is then used in water that is 28 degrees Celsius, what would be the approximate pressure? Okay, so as before, the two pieces of information we need to know are what is the change in temperature and what is the pressure difference assigned for every degree? That doesn't change. I've left it up on the board for you there. One degree equals 0 0.6 bar all of the time in these questions, okay? So we already know that, that's the constant. What we need to work out now is what is that change of temperature? So we're going from 16 degrees to 28 degrees. Maybe we're filling tanks outside on a cold day and then using them in a heated swimming pool. I mean, who knows? Doesn't really matter for the sake of the question. I'm just giving you an example where this may occur. So. 
we have a rise here this time, okay? So a temperature increase of 12 degrees. So we can write that down there. It's a rise of 12 degrees. And we know for every degree, there is a 0 0.6 bar change of pressure. So we just need to work out what are 12 0 0.6s, yeah? So we multiply 12 by 0 0.6, and that should give you 7.2, okay? Now that 7.2 is bar increase of pressure, okay? As the temperature rises, the pressure will rise with that. So we know it's going to rise by 7.2. We know we started with 186 bar, so we just add the two together, and that should give you 193.2 bar. So overall, this right here is going to be your approximate pressure when you take that cylinder into that water, okay? So that's been a couple of quick examples on how temperature will affect pressure. What we're going to do now is I'll just get rid of all this info and then we'll quickly talk about how temperature has an effect on volume, okay? So just don't go anywhere. Okay, so another aspect of Charles Law governs volume. We already know from that previous section that as you increase temperature, the pressure will increase. As you decrease temperature, the pressure will decrease. But what effect does this have on volume? Okay, in questions during your IDC, your exams, your study sessions, we're always or we're often told what the container is. So the container can be a flexible container or it could be a balloon or it could be your lungs, okay? In all three aspects, we're talking about something that can expand and it can compress. Sometimes we're given the scenario of an inflexible container or a scuba cylinder. So as the name suggests, it does the opposite. It does not compress and it does not expand as we change the pressure on it, okay? So in these instances, it's, to, it's important to determine which one we're talking about. As the name suggests, flexible, it's flexible. So we can apply it to everything, you know? If we increase the temperature, it will increase the pressure and increase the volume. If we decrease the temperature, we decrease the pressure and we'll decrease the volume as well, okay? So if it's a flexible container, it's going to expand and compress along with the other attributes. If we think in the case of an inflexible container or a scuba cylinder, it's not going to do that. It is inflexible. It is not capable of expanding or compressing. Um, so by that means, if we increase the temperature on an inflexible container, yes, the pressure will increase along with that, but the volume will not change because the vessel is incapable of flexing. Okay, it is inflexible. So what we'll do is I'll write up a question and then we'll bear this philosophy in mind and we'll apply that detail to the question. Okay, so just give us a second. And there we go. Okay, so I've written up a question here, but I've left the data there just so you can maybe reference it as we're working the way through the question. Okay, so this is a typical example question and what we're gonna do is just apply what we've learned to the question. So if a scuba cylinder is filled to capacity at room temperature, what would happen to the cylinder if it were taken on an ice dive? Okay, so I've got temperature, pressure, and volume because these are the three attributes that we're talking about when we're, when we're looking at Charles' law. So what's going to happen to these three things in this situation? Um, room temperature, for anybody who's interested in the UK, I think is defined as something between 20 and 22 degrees Celsius. But regardless of that, we see what the question's actually asking. So it's room temperature and we're taking it on an ice dive. Therefore, the question is telling us that we are decreasing the temperature, okay? The temperature will drop, okay? So we're gonna have a temperature decrease Okay, so 
along with the temperature decrease, what happens to the pressure? It decreases as well. That's what we discussed in the, the first part of this video, okay? What you do to one, the other will do the same. So the pressure will decrease. Okay, so now finally, what is going to happen to the volume? We'd like to think it will decrease as well, but in the question, it is stated a scuba cylinder. So is a scuba cylinder a flexible container where it will follow suit to this? No, it's not. It is an inflexible container. So remember, it's not going to play by those rules. It's going to stay the same size. It is not going to increase. It is not going to decrease. It is incapable of doing that. It is inflexible. So the volume would remain unchanged. So it will remain the same. Okay, do we get that? All right, what I'll do now is I'll write up one final example that we can work on before you guys can take a break and start playing around with your own questions. All right, give us a second. Okay, so finally, last question here. A balloon is semi-inflated outside on a cold day. What would happen to the balloon if it were taken indoors to a warm house? Okay, so again, we're looking at what's going to happen to these three attributes. So what's happened to the temperature in this question? It's started in a cold environment and now we're taking it into a hot environment. So we have an increase in temperature. So the temperature will increase. What will happen to the pressure as a result of that temperature increase? This is what we've covered in a few sections already and it's up there on the board. As we increase the temperature, we increase the pressure. So the pressure will increase. Okay, now what's going to happen to the volume in this instance? We're talking about a balloon and remember a balloon is a flexible container. So a flexible container will change according to the other properties as well. So that flexible container will increase along with that as well. So increase of volume to go along with that. Okay, so nice and simple. Um, just remember in all three cases, everything will increase together or decrease together with the one exception of the inflexible container and that will just not change volume. It will still increase in temperature, increase in pressure, or decrease accordingly, but the volume will remain unchanged. Everything else will rise and fall together, okay? So I hope you got something out of that and stay tuned for the next one.